There's a fair bit of code today, so check out the sample project, text version of this video, including code snippets, and links to the various resources I used to piece all of this information together in the description. So the very first thing you'll want to do so you don't end up like me spinning your wheels, double checking everything, and banging your head on the desk when nothing works, is to enable input on your project. To do this, go to Project Settings, Audio, and check Enable Audio Input. Once that's done, add an audio bus to your project, name it something reasonable since you'll have to look it up by name later, and add the record effect to it. You'll also probably want to go ahead and mute this bus, otherwise the raw mic input will be audible the entire time the game is running. But that just prepares the bus for recording. To actually pipe audio into your bus, you need to add an audio stream player with a stream type of a new audio stream microphone, an output bus set to your recording bus, and autoplay checked so that will be active from the start. So now that we have everything wired up and ready to go, let's look at how we can record some audio and then play it back. First, create your UI however you want it and connect any UI signals required to a script so that the user can choose when to start and stop recording and when to play it back. In this script, you'll then need a reference to the record effect you added to your bus earlier using audioserver.getbus effect, but since everything with buses works based off of indices, you'll first want to get the index of the bus you're using to record using the audioserver.getbusindex function. Once you have a reference to your recording effect, you can call it effect.setRecordingActive with the one parameter it takes set to either true or false to start or stop recording. So now you have your recording in memory, but you still need to access the actual recording data so you can work with it. This can be done with a call to effect.getRecording, which will return an audio stream sample containing your recorded data. To play this audio, you can assign it to the stream property of any audio stream player instance and then call the play function on that stream. Just make sure not to use the same audio stream player you're recording from. Greetings! If you want to save your audio to disk, all you have to do is take your audio stream sample and call the save to wave function with a stream parameter defining the path where you want to save the file. You can give it both a hard path if the export needs to be user facing or a relative path using the user prefix if you want to save it along with other files intended for internal use in your game. So that's a quick look at working with audio offline, but what if we want to monitor and respond to the audio coming in through the microphone in real time? That's actually more straightforward than you probably think, but really poorly documented, so a big thanks to this GitHub repo from Mizizizes for clarifying how to do this. Essentially what we want to do here is use audioserver.getBusPeakVolumeLeftDB to get the output volume of our recording bus. But to do that, the bus can't be muted, which it has been so far so we don't hear it. The solution, therefore, is to create another bus, mute it, pipe your record bus into this new bus, and unmute the record bus so that we can properly monitor its output. With this setup, we can now call the previously mentioned function and get the instantaneous peak volume output from our mic input. This will output in decibels, which is probably not useful for you, so you can call db to linear to convert it to a float in the range 0 to 1. We now have real-time audio input monitoring. You can also take several samples over time and average them together to get an idea of the overall volume rather than the instantaneous one. And this is a much smoother representation of the mic input volume. The next thing you might be interested in after getting the real-time volume of the mic input is to get the real-time frequency. Now full disclaimer on this one, signal processing is a complex area of study and not something I know enough about to discuss in depth. Therefore, what I'm going to show here is just the bare minimum using some built-in functionality from Godot as described in one of the Godot dev blogs. In short, once you have real-time audio monitoring set up, you can also add a spectrum analyzer effect to your record bus and get a reference to this effect in your code using audioserver.getbus instance but adjusting the index of the effect to whatever position the analyzer is on your bus. And then you can call on spectrumanalyzer.getMagnitude for frequency range along with the minimum and maximum frequencies you want data for. This function returns a vector though, so just call magnitude.length to get a singular value for the strength if needed. We can now see the strength of my voice in the 0 to 500 hertz range exclusively. The last thing you may be wondering is how to change what device is used for recording, and you're in luck with this one since Audio Server offers all the functionality you need with simple one-line functions. To get all available devices by name, you can call audioserver.captureDeviceList. To get the current device being used, you can call audioserver.captureGetDevice. And to set the device you want to record with, you can call audioserver.captureSetDevice and pass it the name of the device you want to use. This is coming in over my headset. This is the microphone on my webcam. And this is my usual studio mic. And that is everything you have probably wanted to know about using the microphone in Godot. As mentioned in the beginning, links to the various sources I used to piece all this together will be linked in the description if you want to dive in further.